Building starships in Starfield is crazy fun and satisfying and can create truly incredible ships. But today we're going to build the best, max out speed, engine, and durability. This should get you comfortable with the ship builder in a way where you also get an incredible ship at the end. But first up, some requirements. You need to be at a high level. The higher the better, but I would not recommend building your own ship if you're not at least in your 30s. For this video, I'm 45 and can get it all maxed out. The other thing you'll need is about half a million credits. If you need money, check out my new credit farming video now that the vendor boxes are gone. You'll also need two ships you're willing to destroy. For this example, I'll be using the Razor Leaf that you can get for free through a quick quest. You don't need Piloting 4 or Starship Design 4 since there's a way around it, but I would highly recommend getting Piloting for it as soon as possible just to make the game less annoying. However, you can use and build the ship without it. Now to start out, we have to head to the Porima system, Porima 3, and go to Red Mile. Here we need to enter the building and run through until we get to the nice gentleman who will let us modify our ship. First, remove the engines, top cosmetic piece, engine holders, and armory. If you have Starship Design Rank 3, you can just get 6 SA4330 engines, but if you don't have Starship Design Rank 3, you can use a glitch where if you're at the same height as the ship, select a part you can build, and then scroll down with the arrow keys until you get to the engine. After getting the engines, we can remove the fuel and cargo. Now we need to get the Pinch 7Z reactor. This also requires piloting and starship design, but we can get it like before. Then we add the Apollo GV200 grav drive from the grav drive list. The only issue now is we need the starship to be flyable. So we're going to add the S204 cargo hold, attach the grav drive to it, and then the reactor to the grav drive. Now we can attach the engines to the reactor, press C to flip them to the right directions, and then attach the final two to the cargo. Next, we add the H20 Atlas HE3 tank to the lower part of the grav drive. Then we add the 200cm ballast shielded cargo above the tanks. Now we're gonna add a few cheap AccuLanders 11s. This will offset the additional weight we added. Now the ship is ready to go to the final engineering location. But we do get an annoying bug you may have run into unattached modules. I promised every piece was put in correctly, but this still happens sometimes. The best way to fix it is to double click the ship. This will light up all the connected parts. Now we know the grav drive and reactor are the problem. So we just reattach that and now we can leave. We head to the soul system on Saturn's planet Titan where New Homestead is. Here we talk to the guy up front. Now we can get rid of all the parts that won't be in our final build. Cockpit, landing gear, cargo holds, and landing dock. Now we're going to add the NG6 landing bay and then the Cabot C4 bridge cockpit. Next is completely optional. We can do three 2x1s, one 2x3, based on what we want the middle to look like. For now, we're just going to use three of the same 2x1s, but this is the main meat of the inside, so pick what you like. We place the hab on the top part of the grav drive and the landing pad on the lower part of the grav drive, then place the cockpit in front. Then we want to put the two engines on the left and right side of the habs. Next, we'll add the Galleon S202 cargoes underneath the starship next to the landing pad. Then we want to add NG20 landing gear. We can put this in the front two spots in front of the cargo we just placed. Now we need to add a docker so we can attach to other ships. Anything works, we're just gonna use the 100 DP slim. Then we can add a scan jammer. However, we need an equipment plate to place it and whatever RNG system they have for shipbuilding makes it so I don't get it this time, but we'll add it later. Now we can add the shields. We choose the Vanguard Bulwark Shield Generator for max shields. And finally, we can add weapons. These are completely optional based on your preference, but first we're gonna add a weapon mount on the left and right sides of the hab. I choose two of the Blaze P 2GW SX Pulse Lasers, two of the MKE 4A Auto Gauss Guns, and four PBO 300 Auto Alpha Beams. Two fit on the bottom of the landing pad, four can fit on the two weapons plate. The final two have to be placed on equipment plates, so we can't add those now. But the ship is already crazy strong. To finish it out, we need to assign three weapons, pay another quarter of a million credits, and then pick the color. If you double click, you can color the whole ship at once. For what it's worth, adding a landing pad with ship builder to an outpost generally has a ton of build options, more than most locations. For that, we just need 18 adaptive frames, two zero wires, 30 iron, and two beryllium. From here, we can add the equipment plates, scan jammer, and the alpha beams, and officially have an OP starship. Also, real quick, the reason we want piloting is because we can't actually sit down in this ship. If we stand up, we have to travel to another location on the map in order to get control of it. Piloting 4 will take away that annoyance, and it's really easy to farm on the piloting simulator. I do want to give a shout out to the Reddit post that had this design. If you want it all typed out rather than a video, click the link in the description. This ship is amazing. It's fast, can grab jump ridiculously far, and very strong in a fight, as well as having an epic cockpit.